Hi, welcome back to my channel, your number one place for everything health and well-being, where I share solutions, tips and strategies. In today's video, I'm going to share with you seven ways to help somebody with anxiety and depression. So one in four people in the UK struggle with some form of mental health condition. It's very likely that you may know somebody in your network of friends or maybe even family members who are currently struggling with anxiety or maybe even depression. Now, for us to be able to understand these conditions, we need to know what the difference is between anxiety and depression. Depression can be classed as one overall illness, whereas anxiety has many different symptoms. Now, these symptoms can affect individuals in very different ways. So you can have a mild form of depression or you could have someone who is struggling with extreme form of anxiety. Now, often what I found in my career, working with people with all sorts of health elements, including mental health issues, that their family and their friends do not exactly know how to cope. They don't know how to offer support because let's face it, we're not actually taught how to help people with mental health issues. Thank God for social media and other platforms. The taboo around mental health is now being lifted. People are opening up and they're speaking a lot more openly about mental health and how it is actually affecting them. So social media has been prevalent in helping bring the issue of mental health conditions up to the forefront. I mean, before they've just been hidden. Now, culturally, there are some cultures where mental health is still kind of a bit of a taboo subject. And this is why channels like YouTube and social media are great because now we can even open up and reach more further afield and actually speak to different people from different cultures and say it's okay. It's okay not to be okay. Depression is defined by having a low mood and or maybe loss of enjoyment in everyday activities. These are seen as the core definitions of depression. Now, there will be a number of other symptoms as well, such as having low self-esteem, feeling very worthless, feeling like, you know, you just sort of can't tackle the day and maybe you're spending more time in bed. You just don't feel like getting out of bed to start the day. Feeling lonely, wanting to be on your own and isolating yourself from everybody else. And worst case scenario, depression can lead on to feelings of perhaps suicide and feeling like, you know, you can't go on. These are the serious symptoms of depression. So anxiety is a little bit different from depression. Now, anxiety actually is a number of different symptoms. So perhaps feeling worried, feeling anxious, you know, not being able to handle those feelings and feeling quite low. And these are the core symptoms of anxiety. And again, these can affect people in many, many different ways. And they can actually lead onto something a lot more bigger. So if someone is left alone and they struggle from uncontrollable anxiety, where they can't control the way they feel, it could perhaps in the long term develop onto something like depression. So it's really important that someone who is actually struggling with anxiety does reach out and also talks about their feelings and how they're feeling. Because the feeling of losing control and feeling on edge and worrying constantly will really affect someone who is struggling with anxiety. So today I'm going to share with you seven ways in which you can help somebody who is struggling with anxiety or depression. So I've given you the definitions between the two mental health conditions. So tip number one, if you do know somebody who is struggling, then reassure them. Say things like, I'm here for you. Call me if you need any help. I'm always here to listen to you. I'm a friend, reach out to me. So these are the things that you should be saying to somebody who is actually struggling with anxiety or depression. Do not say things like, pull yourself together. You're just having a bad day. Why don't you try doing this? This is going to make you feel better. Or man up. These are the things that you should not be saying to somebody who is struggling with anxiety or depression because it's probably taken them a lot to let you know they are actually struggling with a condition like this. So you need to make sure that you encourage them the right way. Be supportive 
and be that friend or family member to offer support and reassurance. Tip number two, offer them full support. Often somebody who is struggling with anxiety or depression needs someone who can listen to them. So let that person know that they can call you whenever they feel like they want to call you, that you're actually there for them. Even if you can't return their calls back straight away, that you will be there to pick up that call on the nearest opportunity and you will actually be there to listen to them. Be someone who they can talk to and offer them advice, but spend more time listening to them. Tip number three, have boundaries. So this is a little bit more for you rather than the individual who is struggling from depression or anxiety. So if you have a function to go to and perhaps whoever it is who's suffering from anxiety, perhaps your spouse, and they don't actually want to go to that function, maybe they were all geared up to go and they're all ready to go, but in the last minute they find that their anxiety has really kicked in and they just do not feel like being sociable and they don't want to be amongst a group of people, then let that be. Just let them stay wherever they want to stay, give them that space, but do not feel guilty for going yourself because it's really important that you still carry on with your life as much as possible. Even though you want to be supportive for your spouse or your friend, you still have to continue and go forward because you have to think about your own mental health as well. Tip number four, do not assume that you know what they want. So again, you need to offer support and you need to listen. But if you can't deal with somebody who has got anxiety, perhaps you just don't know how to manage it. You know, you you because you're not a qualified therapist. Well, you may be, but I'm thinking generally you're not. You need to get somebody who's a professional who can help. And this will really help give you support as well while you are offering all the help to the individual who is struggling with anxiety or depression. Tip number five, offer kindness and praise. This is really important. So if you know somebody who is struggling with anxiety and depression, as mentioned in point one, it's very important to say the right things, but always be someone who is there offering kindness and praise and support. Tip number six, if you know somebody who is struggling with anxiety or depression, let them know their strengths. So Emphasize to them that they are a lot more outside their anxiety because they might feel that they are flawed, that they are useless, that they are a failure. So number seven, people who are struggling with anxiety or depression may push you away. Now, this is because they don't want to burden you with their feelings. They don't want to make you feel sad with their sad feelings or the way they're feeling or how low they're feeling. So initially, what they think is that they want to be on their own and they will push you away. It's not that they don't love you. They do it because they love you. But it's important for you to recognise this. And again, you need to offer them support. And if they feel like they need space, then that's fine. And you may notice, if you look back, if you know someone with anxiety, that they sometimes cut themselves off. You might be trying to reach them on the phone or they might be coming to a function that they don't turn up at. This is because sometimes they need their space. And I do emphasise that that space is important, but you do need to check up on them. Make sure that they are OK. But honour that time away. Let them spend time on their own if that's going to make them feel a lot better. So in this video, I spoke about all the things that may help someone struggling with anxiety and depression. So what else may help? If you're interested to know a little bit more, then hit that bell notification symbol because in next week's video, I'm going to share with you the health benefits of exercise. So be sure to hit that bell notification symbol and don't miss out on that video. So in the meantime, while you wait for that video to be released on this channel, I highly recommend that you check out these two videos. And as always, I really appreciate you watching today and be sure to tune in next week and have a great day. Bye.